You were singing the game I go. <laughs> she left me roses by the stairs. Surprises lets me know she cares. That's nice. Hi, this is Rish Outfield. And I'm Big Anklevich. And this is That Gets My Goat. My goat is gotten. Really? Do you want to share it with the rest of the class? No. I was watching this show the other day. The guys at work, for some reason, really enjoy throwing on this channel. It's some kind of craft slash barbecue cooking type channel, right? The Simpsons ended, and they're like, oh, we're still eating lunch in the break room. They're like, hey, let's switch the TV over, and they switch to this other channel. I can't remember what it was called, but it had this Swedish cooking show, right? And this guy's like, he's going around, and he's getting these authentic uh, Swedish things to prepare, right? And so he's decided that he, he he's there milking this cow. And he's like, have you ever had milk straight from the cow? Oh, it's so great. And then he turns the cow's udder up towards his mouth and squeezes a squirt straight into his mouth and then right after that he gets a goat i suppose it's probably not a goat Dude, it is goat's milk right it, it was ron jeremy wasn't it <laughs> he gets this goat and he's like oh this goat isn't doesn't want to be cooperative and so he like gets on top of this goat and squeezes it between his leg and reaches all back behind and we're like oh Wow, I didn't know they could put this kind of stuff on TV. Swear it looks like he's completely molesting this goat when he's getting the goat's milk in this show. It was pretty humorous. Anyways, sorry, so my goat was gotten. You're a sick bastard. You know, after doing the trilogy, or the, you know, the huge episode the last time, I figured we'd just do a very, very short episode just to clear the palate. A sorbet, if you oh. will. And Palate I, cleansing sorbet. Yes, colon cleansing. <laughs> the thing I wanted to complain about is, and you know, I didn't even know the name of it and, and, until now. 1998, a little song came out by Cher called Believe. Uh-huh. If you want to sing I, a couple of bars just for the listener at home. I don't know why this falls on me as the responsibility to do, you, not but know I shall. It? Do We've, you believe? After love, after love, after love, but really don't think, think I'm wrong strong enough. enough. Yes, almost perfect, except for you sounded like a woman singing, and, and it, was, <laughs> it was Cher. 1998, folks. Uh, by my calendar, that's 14 years ago. And Aww. in that song, there was a particular effect that was done to her voice that... Uh, I have, for 12 years, not known what it was called. It's called auto-tuning. Uh-huh. I'd never heard it before. I'm sure it had been around in hip-hop and rap and that kind of horrendous crap. But I'd never heard it before, and suddenly there's this number one song played for months, all the time. And, and we heard this, and uh, I thought, wow, that, that was interesting. That, that was the bullet time of music. <laughs> and then... You know, a couple of years later, Faith Hill had that, ooh, I love the way you love the way you love me. Do you have any idea what I'm singing? Sounds vaguely familiar. And it would yeah. touch me, would be part of the uh, the chorus with the auto-tuning thing again. This, this strange, synthetic, robotic, alien art artifact. This this thing that's done to the music afterward. I mean, nobody... Uh -huh actually sings like that and uh, I, I you know i thought that that was strange because it was a country song and they did right. to it but you know it was her pop crossover album or whatever you want to call that uh -huh. uh, that was in uh, 99 2000 but here it is 2010 and we're 14 still years later hearing auto-tune in 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 songs on the radio yeah I, it boggles my mind. It not only angers me, but I, I don't get it. I don't understand if, if the Black Eyed Peas need to do it to cover how awful their song is. I guess I can see that, but people should say, okay, hold it. Stop. No. Disco didn't last this long. What are you doing bringing out this autotune crap again? <laughs> It's, it's, let me let me know what your feelings are. Does this bother you? Has it ever bothered you to hear? You know what I'm talking about. I right? do. Yes, of course I do. Yeah, I also heard that share song. Believe, 
Um, and I thought it was funny at the time to joke about how, oh yeah, it turns out that Cher is actually a robot, and you can... It, it, it's finally breaking down, and you can hear the obvious roboticness in her voice. Do you believe Oh, you know, I'm not a fan of autotune, I have to admit. There are songs that I can handle that have autotune, but I think almost all of them would be better without it. Well, for example, or any coming to mind? Because, see, now, uh, the only one I could think of off the top of my head, and, and maybe I should have gone onto Wikipedia and clicked on uh, the autotune link and seen if there was a list of songs, but the Black Eyed Peas song that goes, I'm sure, uh, uh, That's dead on. I have no idea the, what that one might That's be. totally recreated <laughs> in the studio with no computers. I know right now you're thinking, will I am? How did they manage to get him, not even on their real podcast, but on the fake one? Wow. Autotune in performance. It is safety net that guarantees good performance. So, so okay, explain what the deal is. It was originally created to help people's... Audio processor uses a phase vocoder to correct pitch in vocal and instrumental performance. It is used to disguise off-key inaccuracies and mistakes and has allowed singers to perform correctly tuned vocal tracks without the need of singing in tune. Well, its main purpose is to slightly bend sung pitches to the nearest true semitone. Autotune can be used as an effect to distort the human voice. So it's actually supposed to fix it, but people have decided to start using it as an effect to distort the voice. Okay, you get someone like a Miley Cyrus that so has a beastly singing voice. Okay. And this autotune uh, program may be used to make her sound better? More. I think so, yeah. It takes the off-tune performances and puts them on tune. I don't understand music very well, so that's asking a lot for me to explain it. But yeah, I think that's what it is. It's, it's studio magic. Do you remember that Simpsons episode where all the kids, including Bart and Milhouse and Nelson and everybody, become part of a boy band yes. that promotes the uh, army? <laughs> And they turn on studio magic, and then suddenly their voices all sound beautiful. And that was a sort of a riff on, on this autotune yeah, thing? I think so. And they actually used autotune. I do remember in the song, they had some of the parts where they would be singing, and then it would do that share effect thing that distorts the voice and makes it all do that little thing that everybody loves so much. Okay, well, according to the Wikipedia page, it was created in 1997 this auto-tune program. Uh -huh. So Cher was pretty much, or, or certainly for the first time I ever heard it. That was 1998. Right. So. And so, you know, she was an early adopter, if you will. Mm -hmm. But apparently it was sort of a trade secret for a while that people would use it to mask the, the, their, the, poor their mistakes. Performance. And then people started to use it in the Cher way. So it's super obvious to create some kind of, I'm making quotes in the air, unique effect on their their voice and i use the quotes because after Cher did it it's no longer unique right and apparently there's an rmb singer called t pain uh-huh who is so known for using autotune that people call it the t pain effect oh yeah you know like like we were saying the Cher effect see i uh, i don't understand how it can be charming because in the Cher song, it was, I wouldn't say that it was charming, but it was unusual. It was something uh -huh. where you go, whoa, what? Is the CD warped in some way kind of thing? <laughs> but, okay, definitely the Faith Hill song. I know you don't know it, but I'll play a clip right here. Right there. You can't describe that in any way other than annoying. <laughs> right? I mean, doesn't that detract from the song? Whether you like Faith Hill or not, that don't. thing, you don't. No, I'm not a fan of Faith Hill, so it doesn't take much to make me dislike a song of hers. But I'm going to need a judge's ruling on this. Would you? <laughs> of course. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I figured, okay, you, you dislike her music so much. No. So, so oh, I, I, none are coming to mind, like I said earlier. But there is a list of people that were known to use. And some that refused to use it as well. How about that? Right. What was the Christina Aguilera thing? Uh, on uh, August 10th, 2009, oh, sh she appeared in public wearing a t-shirt that read, Auto-Tune is for pussies. So, I, you know, I don't know. But, oh, I don't know if this is irony or not. 
but on her album Bionic, it uses the technology. Ooh, that's that's just what do politicians? Where they say one thing and do the other? Hypocritical. That's just hypocritical, isn't it? I suppose so. Wow. And, uh, but to be fair, I would do Christina Aguilera. Really? Yeah. As long as she didn't do that thing with her hand that she does when she sings, oh. that's a deal breaker. What if she did one of those really belt you out kind of yells that she does often in her singing when she's I would, climaxing? I would be <laughs> quite proud of myself for producing such a sound or, or for, for, you actually for inspiring such a Getting singer. someone to that point would be a first mm. for you. <laughs> What's that? We are beautiful in a special way. I, you can bring me down. down. That's probably her lowest song, and I don't know why I thought of that one. There's got to be one where she goes... Ah! But At uh, least she's not like uh, Mariah Carey, where she would do that squealy thing in every song just to show that she could do it. That used to just drive me insane. Mariah Carey needs to be uh, cast down and forgotten, just like the Christian God, uh, according to Mola Ram. <laughs> she kind of has been. That's uh, a, a good no, thing. No, but she's got more number one That's songs true. than the Beatles and Elvis and, Presley and Geggy Ta put together. So oh, I wow. Just, I'm sorry. That was a dig at you because I have a friend. He's a douchebag who actually saw Geggy Ta in concert. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. They were opening for Sting. Oh, well, I'll cut that part out. <laughs> All right. So I'm sorry. Uh, does Sting have any songs where he uh, No, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Because he can actually sing. He might have done a, a collaboration, though, with like some cheesy sugar babes or something like that that were using it. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, tomorrow you need to listen to your entire Sting playlist. Okay. If you find any, let me know and I'll put it in. Sure. It, well, yeah, okay. I'll be on that. We right. spent... Three weeks in podcast time railing against the gimmick, the fad, the cheap trick that is 3D. I like 3D. cheap trick. Oh, 3D. Sorry. They sang the flame. So I, I'll, I'll see your like and raise you love for the flame. Oh, I want you uh, to want, want me. Oh, wait. Sorry. I a handsome didn't man, mean but, to mm. say that to you. <laughs> but, dude, this is such a gimmick. And it just, oh, I guess it is the bullet time of music. But bullet time went away. That's a totally great point. The fact that I, I heard a song today, and that's what inspired this. I was driving over here, and I heard a song with autotune in it. It's weird. I can't even remember the name, but it's just a, it's a strange term. Mm -hmm. But I guess it was the name of a product. So Right. But I heard that, and I was just like, oh, please. It's 1987. What are we doing listening to? Wait, what year is it? <laughs> I, I, it just saddened me that that kind of crap is still going on. And, and that's really the only reason I wanted to talk about this. I like having a podcast and being able to say whatever the hell you want. The autotune is crap. Well, um, the one thing that I guess might be able to soften the fact that autotune is still here is just that that's the way everything is. And music especially. Fads come in, then they go away, then they come back again. And they go away and they come and each time they come back, they're mixed with other newer things or different things. They just keep adding and mixing them around. And, you know, back in the 60s or the 70s, when they came up with the wah-wah pedal for the guitar, at a certain point, it was just so awful and terrible. And people didn't want to hear that in music anymore. And it went away for like the whole of the 80s, pretty much. And then in the 90s, it came back again, and everybody was using the wah-wah pedal on all their songs. Then it goes away again. You know, these kind of things, they just they come and go. Once it's invented, unfortunately, it's never going to go away completely. That's true, but how many songs do you hear with a theremin in him? Theremin is, yeah, that's interesting. It, it has a certain sound to it, unfortunately. It's hard to work a theremin into a normal song. You can work it into some kind of Halloween themed song really easy but you know it takes somebody like brian wilson to be able to mix it into a regular song without everybody going eh, i'm scared <laughs> so <laughs> theremin yeah it's that it's, it takes a lot more skill than auto-tune does i'm sure okay well, let, well let's just call it good i i'm not ragingly angry against auto-tune because it doesn't really affect me in any way you know, the, the, a bad song on the radio can bother me. It can upset me. The, the other day I went somewhere 
and they were showing Fantastic Four, the 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 movie, the night, uh, the I know what you're talking about, yeah, the first you, one. You, you've heard of the movie, and I, I met a friend there, and he said, not even a friend, just a guy I knew, and he said, "How you doing?" And I said, "No, oh, I was doing all right." But then this awful Fantastic Four movie started playing, and he goes, "Boy, I'm sorry that you'd let something like that ruin your day." Like I was the douche, <laughs> and <laughs> when clearly the Fantastic Four were was the to douches. Blame, yeah. I felt like, oh gosh, you know, you, you sort of called me on my uh, criticism of the Fantastic Four film. It didn't really ruin my day, you know? I mean, it's not like it was Batman Forever. <laughs> I don't know. It's not like we're talking about some of those really deep topics that we don't tend to talk about, like the things that go right. on in third world countries. Yeah, the we things don't that go on behind closed doors. Talk about that often, do we? Which are actual issues and that, but you have to be educated to talk about those, I think. And also, there's very little humor <laughs> in apartheid, in the starvation, in molestation, in... Really? Uh, I find those to be quite humorous. Yeah, but then you just oh, end that's up right. cutting I, it out. I'm a douche, aren't I? I oh. forgot. Are, is, is it's true? Are you coming out of the, the, <laughs> the, the douche Summer's closet? Eve closet? <laughs> yes, it's been already stated and verified on this very show that that's what I am. I don't know. Can we get a judge's ruling on that? <laughs> Mash and Gill. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> but let's let's just call that good. Maybe next week something awful will have happened. And, oh, we can only hope we'll have something we can seriously complain about. But uh, I've kept you up very long. It's three o'clock in the morning once again. You know, doesn't that get your goat? Gets my goat. Yeah, I have to go to work in the morning. Oh, I mean, it's already morning. We'll see you later, folks. Yes, do not auto tune, please. Think of the children. We should figure out how to auto tune our shows. I wonder if there's a cheap and easy way to do that. That'd be awesome. We should get on. Happy <laughs> See you guys. Good folks. night. You know what gets my goat? That this show is produced under your Creative Commons 3.0 license. Why would you bother?